Vogue, how did that happen? Vogue? Yeah. So after ID, um, in the late 90s, I started working for Italian Vogue mm -hmm. with a great editor called Franca Sozzani. And Italian Vogue was sort of, of all the Vogues, you could say the most creative, where, you know, she'd give you 30 pages to shoot the most incredible images. So, so you know, I did that for maybe God, 10 years. I was at Italian Vogue, sort of the main stylist. And then I got a call from Anna Winter in America to come and work for American Vogue. So from Italian Vogue, I moved to American Vogue and I was there for working for Anna for seven years. Then I got a call. Damn, you do long stints. <laughs> so <Like> long. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> and then you're gonna love this. Then I got a call from W Magazine to work with um, Stefano Tonki, a really great editor. And I was there for seven years. <laughs> wow. So they, you know, but when you're having fun or when you're enjoying what you do, Time is of no essence, you know? Like I, I, I would say, oh, the issue comes out in six months and someone's like, that's six months away. But for me, it was like tomorrow. Mm. So yes, and then one day out of the blue, I got a call from Jonathan Newhouse, um, a very great, he was, you know, he owns Condé Nast, the company that owns Vogue. And he said, um, the editor who was there, had been there for 26 years, was, you know, fashion industry, nobody leaves any job. <laughs> Clearly, yeah. <laughs> was leaving and would I come in for an interview? So I came in for a couple of interviews. Um, I didn't think I was going to get it because to be honest, I thought Vogue wasn't meant for people like me. You know, I thought Vogue was meant for, you know, women from a certain background. And and I was, you know, the boy from Lovell Grove, you know, I was gay, I was outspoken, you know, I was good at my job. But um, yeah, I went for an interview and I literally told them, you know, how to, how I would do Vogue for, for 2017. And what was that message? To make it inclusive, to make it diverse. You know, there was this notion in the fashion industry that black women or women of color on covers don't sell. It's been in the industry for as long as I can remember. But I saw all these affluent women, you know, not just black women, you know, gay women, women from, you know, with working class backgrounds, you know, Muslim women, all these British, who are, who are British essentially, not seeing themselves reflected in the magazine. I thought, well, not only is it bad, but, you know, it's not good business, but I wanted to create a place or a safe place where women could just feel welcomed. Because I always remember my mother always said to me, if you can see it, you can be it. So I wanted to create um, a magazine where, you know, women of all shapes, sizes, you know, race, age, socioeconomic background could see themselves reflected. And that's all I did. I didn't reinvent the, the wheel. I just thought, who are the women out there that I wanted to reach? And that's what I did. And thank God the world was, I mean, now diversity is a buzzword, right? But in 2017, nobody was wanted, wanted that on a magazine. And I always said, you know, I knew I'd probably be fired three months in, but I also learned, and this is what I got from my father, I'd rather be fired for something I believed in than to go in half halfing it and get fired anyway, half assing it, as Max. I say. <laughs> so yeah, that's how Vogue happened and the world was ready. When you got that call saying that you were gonna take that top job at Vogue, how did you feel? I Give felt me scared. I felt scared on one hand because I knew the type of person I am that I that I wouldn't, like I said, I wouldn't just go in and try to make do. I would need to change everything. I also knew that Vogue had such a huge, I mean, Vogue's the best magazine in the world and has such a huge sort of history that I wanted to sort of be a part of it but make it about today. And I didn't know if the readers would be ready. I mean, before I started the job, you know, there were speculations in the newspaper. I mean, I got called all kinds of African. I got called, I got called I, I got called the, the black, uh, what was it? I had the, uh, the, the, the black. The quote. <laughs> they said it was like going to Crufts and the, right, yeah. and the cat, and the cat one, like a whole other breed. So already I had that on my shoulders. It was really, it was a really tough time, but I didn't speak. I just thought, let me just bring out the magazine. And when the first issue dropped, December 
2072 with Adjua on the cover, an issue that was dedicated to Great Britain, the country that gave me a home, the country that I loved, and featured all the best, you know, um, Zadie Smith, Naomi Campbell, um, Sadiq Khan, that's the best of Britain. The world got it straight away. And from that minute, the, the, the magazine just went up, 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 up. And we haven't looked back. But even, I, I read a, so I read about that story of the newspaper when you got the job as the, the top job at Vogue. They said it was like Crufts, but the cat winning yes. racism. And then I also recall a, a story you tell about arriving at Vogue one day mm -hmm. and a security lady not letting you in. Mm -hmm. because they thought you were the delivery man. Yeah. And at that point, you were oh, the editor. I've been the editor for years. And they wouldn't let you in the building. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was you know, I think she, the woman was hired from God knows where. <laughs> I walked in, I walked in, and without asking for anything, without asking for my pass, it was like, loading bay. I was like, excuse me? What? You have to use the loading bay. And I was like, I'm the editor of this magazine. But what that, you know, I will say what that taught me was never to feel that the work is done. Never to feel that I'm okay. Never to feel that I've made it. Those moments remind me that there's still a lot to do. A younger person walking in there would have been paralyzed with fear. But I knew how to do something about it. And this also happened years ago at a show where they put all fashion directors in the front row and put me in the second row. And I literally was on Twitter the next day. I'm not scared. Fear is not an option for me. You know, from a young age, I've never been scared of fighting for, you know, what I deserve, or fighting for what people from different backgrounds deserve. So yes, that happened at Vogue, you know, but it also made me realize that you always have to fight and you can never be complacent. Even today, do you feel like there's people that want to see you fail and that don't want a man of your colour and background to be in that role? I mean, I think, you know, I mean, I've proven myself. I mean, at the end of the day, I didn't just create a magazine that looked good, but also a magazine that was finance. It's so financially successful. You know, diversity sells. I remember taking the job and people saying to me, diversity is down market. Yes, I heard that. Then I had Oprah Winfrey on the cover wearing the most incredible diamond earrings and it sold out. So every day I continue to sort of um, challenge what the idea of Vogue is and an idea of being an editor is. But now I look around at all the magazines and, and, and diversity is now a part of, part of the media, you know. Having black models on the covers, that's no longer a a big deal, having issues around, you know, having gay issues or trans issues. It's no longer an issue. But in 2017, it was unheard of. So it shows how far we've come, but there's still a long way to go. You fought, Edward. You fought for your entire life. You fought no. for yourself. You fought for others. You're, you're fighting for your people. Um, you're, you're doing that every day. It's so clear in all your work. I, I was reading also about the, the Black issue you released mm -hmm. in how well that sold out where you put all sort of black models throughout Daniel this magazine. Man. And yeah, and that fight, again, it comes at a cost. Um, and one of the costs it came at was your health. Yeah. I read about the health scare you had. Can you tell me about that? And the doctors linked that back to your lack of sleep and yeah. it sounded like some kind of sort of a culmination of yeah. fighting a bit too hard, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, you know, I was, I was even on my way here, I was in, in the car with my peer and she's like, you're always fighting. You're always pushing forward. Yes, basically all those years of um, just not sleeping, just working, overworking, traveling. I woke up one day and I saw these black markings in my, in my vision. And it turned out that I was, uh, I was having a, a detached retina. So the, det the retina did detach eventually, you know, one surgery, then it detached again. And it detached four times in the same eye and then as all that was happening um my other eye started so they had to operate on that so i've been having five operations and you know i work with my eyes so can you imagine what that did 
So that was really harrowing. And then also I developed um, tinnitus, oh so the hearing. I had that. Oh, it's it's hard to explain. You can't explain. You can't explain it. If I said to you, your, your ear's going to ring, you go, oh, okay. But when your ear rings You think you're going crazy? Yeah, you go crazy. You think you're going crazy. I had it for about 15 days and I can see, I, you know. Only 15 days? Yeah. It's and gone? I, it, it went, yeah. Oh, wow. And I, so I started reading online about it and it goes, you're going to have this for life. And then I read about the, the psychological impact on your mental health of having oh. it for life. Can People... you imagine having that and then having your my eyes? But what it did teach me, you know, when, you know, I didn't work for two years. People didn't realize really? all the, uh, when my whole sort of eye issues were happening, I didn't work for two years. But in the industry, you know, you can, you, you have so many shoes banked anyway. So it looks like you are. But I knew after that, that I had to change my life, that I had to practice self-care, that I had to... You know, work hard, but not travel as much, not take every job, not... And British Vogue came at the right time because it helped, you know, it meant I'll be in one place a lot. I'll be in an office, mm. which was also very new because I hadn't been in an office for a while. And yes, it really helped me turn my life around. I mean, now I'm such a health nut. A purpose-driven man like you that's so in love with his work, mm -hmm. for your work to be taken, because your eyes, as you say, are central to what no. you do, so you no. can't see films, TV, no. more, you know, shoots well. What was the, the sort of mental health implications of that? Oh, my God, I was, I was, I, I was a mess. I mean, I was, I was living in New York at the time anyway, and I was seeing, I saw a, a therapist who said I had PTSD because I, I was so scared of losing my vision, it spiraled, I mean, to all my, to my relationship. It spiraled into my life. I was so scared. I, and I remember the idea of going blind wouldn't leave my mind for one second. Like, it wasn't like every day I thought of, oh, I might go blind once. It was every second on my mind. I could be happy and it, I'll go back. You're gonna go blind. And the mind, the brain is so powerful. So imagine you're leading your life and then there's this thing running behind your brain. You're going to go blind, you're going to go blind, but nonstop. And it took a lot of therapy to, cognitive therapy to help me deal with that. Because I was convinced, not just one eye, but two. But then I found the most incredible doctor in New York, probably the best in his field. And, you know, my eyes are, yeah, good now. If you love the Diary of a CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor, become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests.